All right, welcome to another episode of Idol Stand Nation. I'm one of your hosts, Jihun, and we also have Aura. What's up? So, see, today we just had a debut with Everglow. All right. Uh, yeah, today's uh, debut was Everglow. Well, it it would be yesterday in Korea, technically. Yes. So, what do you think of it? So, I did like it. Um, I was actually surprised by it, to be honest. Um. So I thought it would be actually a cuter song just from the title itself, Bon Bon Chocolate. Yes. But no, I I, I enjoyed the song. It was very, mm, I, I wouldn't call it sexy or I wouldn't call it a uh, girl crushy. It's borderline of on those, I'd say. But no, I liked it. Yeah, it was, I mean, there was definitely a lot of uh, um, the kind of like that in your face attitude with the feel to the song and with their imagery. Yeah, um, I myself was also wasn't expecting that because um, from the preview videos of the members, not the actual preview video for the music video itself, the pre- the preview videos for the members kind of put off a more of a pure, pretty, um, romantic kind of vibe, especially with yeah. uh, she uh, Hun. Yeah. So I actually didn't like it at first. No. No. I actually like. I wouldn't say I loved it. I'd say I, I actually enjoyed it, but I wouldn't say I loved it. Um, it felt like it be it was fun. Uh, it really gave off a really good vibe to me. Um, but yeah, I I liked it right off the bat. Uh, what held it off for you in the beginning? <laughs> right from the from the opening uh, um, bass line to 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 the beat. Um, and the auto tune, it reminded me of everything I didn't like about American pop music from like seven years ago or so, eight years ago. Mm. Like if you remember back, like I, I wasn't really big on American uh, pop music to begin with. Yeah. Um, uh, especially around that time, but I remember anytime I did hear anything from like American radio, it was always of this type of sound and. Pitbull was everywhere. He was always like a, a guest on someone's song, song, and it was just so much auto tune and so much of that, um, of that, that hard thrashy hip hop beat. Mm. I'm okay. So one, I don't know who Pitbull is. So uh, there's that. Um, but I can see where the auto tune can be a turn off, uh, especially. Um, I'm trying to remember. Who, that rapper that uh, really blew up because of auto tune. Yeah, I know who you're talking about too, and uh, that, that that kind of goes back to was it seven or eight years ago when he blew up with that. Yeah. And then everyone started following tune. Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of his music, anyways. Uh, but my friends were, so I obviously heard it everywhere. Yeah. Um, and. It, it did affect K-pop as well. I want to say around 2015, 2016, a lot of yeah. um, songs that were coming out were very um, had a lot of auto tune uh, present in the songs, like from groups like Super Junior. I remember they they had one, um, and maybe even like Shiny. Or, yeah. I, I did hear it for sh- a little bit for Shiny. Uh, FX as well. Years. Yeah. Um. I. Don't know about Super Junior. I may have missed uh, that so- the few songs that they did auto tune because um, there was a period I didn't even listen to Super Junior. So it could have been that period where I didn't listen to them. Uh, and even but, like yeah. uh, Sony Shide, I can't remember the name of that song, but there was one that they had a bit of uh, auto tune in it as well. Yeah, I-, I know what you're talking about. Which by um, then I'd already been off about uh, Sony Shide for a while. Uh, it, I think it might have been uh, the you think or whatever. Yeah, I, I can't remember. But um, so for for this song with Everglow, it's fine for right now for for like this kind of I should say maybe this era, you know, for mm-hmm. for this period for this for this year. But I don't see that as being something that will be. Um, timeless. 
No. Like, I don't see anybody wanting to listen to that 10 years from now. No. I, I ve it does ve very much feel like it'd be in the moment kind of song. It's not something that I'm going to probably listen to you in like six months, but for what it, the time it's released for a debut song, it is going to be a song that I thought, oh, it's a pretty good debut. Uh, I wouldn't say it's going to top the charts or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not even really well. So it's it is doing fairly well. It's at 1.3 million views right now. Okay. But uh, I was actually expecting more because the the trailer for the music video had already uh, gotten up to like five million views. Yeah, I mean, so so the teaser definitely gave a much different uh, feel. So. Uh, I think it could be a different expectation that was created because um, I definitely had a different expectation from the title alone uh, and you said you had a different expectation from the teasers and whatnot compared to the music video yeah from from the from the member um, videos yeah. when you're when you're I think they call it uh, um, something crack so so it was just a um, Kind of like a showcase of each of an ind individual member, yeah. but for this song, I, I just yeah, I don't I don't see myself mm -hmm. all wanting to go out and buy the album. Yeah, I'm I I don't think I'll buy the album, but I do think um. So I think uh, Eden and uh, Shion definitely did very well in this song. Their vocals were good, and uh, Eden definitely did amazing in the as a center. Yes, she. If you remember, she kind of struggled with that role in uh, Produce Forty Eight. She did. Um, I mean, she did. W whenever she was center, she really did want it. You could tell that she always wanted to be center. And now, as after she's had a little bit more experience, and especially after Produce, she really does do an amazing job as a center. She captures your eye almost immediately. Oh yes, yes. She 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 does a very good job of that, and she's a lot more stable. Yes, she does seem all, uh, confident, a bit more confident in how she performs now. Uh, at least from the music video itself, I haven't seen the stage perf any stage performances, but from the music video itself, uh, she does look like she is more confident in herself especially after the whole produce uh 48 yeah and for uh jose Dim, she was in the idol school and i didn't recognize her at all uh her image is so different yeah i again i still haven't watched idol school so um slacker yeah 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 uh <laughs> but uh the other person that caught my eye was actually um i'd have to say mia uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, she, she was another one that I think she's well, so they all did a pretty good job of standing out oh. and with six members It's pretty easy to get a good good amount of screen time. Yeah um, But yes, I, I hear you man. So what was it about me that caught your eye pink hair? Uh, <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking. Uh, no, like her vocals were very stood out very, a lot uh, to me like when she sang it really captured my interest and she just did a beautiful job i'm trying to avoid the word amazing by the way uh <laughs> <laughs> but no she her vocals were very beautiful um and her visuals definitely gave off that girl crush vibe so i think she's the girl crush of the group anyway so yeah for me I, um I thought she did a really good job with capitalizing on what she learned from Produce 48, especially from when, when you're performing Rumor. Are we talking about Mia or are we talking about... Xi'an. Okay, because okay. I was talking about Mia for a second. Well, so for Xi'an, if you remember when they're um, practicing for Rumor, yeah, she couldn't really nail that walk, that specific walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought she did a really good job with not just you know, not just the not just the walking, but the that the ambiance that she projects. 
she did a really good job of, of capturing what she learned from Curtis 48, building upon that and portraying it in this music video. Yeah, she. How do how do I explain? It's her aura. I almost didn't recognize. Like she gave a very different feel from when she was on Produce. Uh, she on definitely did a 180 to me. Uh, because I was like, hey, where's she on? Where's she on? I know she's in this right. group, but after I realized who that who it was, uh, I was like, wow, she that aura, that change of aura definitely made her unrecognizable to me, and you know, she did an amazing job doing that. Yeah, it was, that's how it was for me with uh, Onda or Selim. So the uh, uh, she, she was just entirely different from you know the image that she had in Idol School. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, they've definitely uh, grown since they've been on uh, the members who were on basically survival shows have definitely taken what they learned from those survival shows and refined it even more. And re they've really done a great job projecting more confidence, more strength, and just put it into uh, the music video and into their uh, like music. Um, now while the, it, it isn't something I would, the, this album isn't something I would probably buy, I am looking forward to possibly buying future albums if they do something more, I would say. I don't know what, but just do something different. I know for me, it would be, they, they'd have to get away from auto-tune. <laughs> It, it could be that uh, and I mean I'm not saying it has to be like a pure vibe it, it like this concept is just fine it's just there's something about this music video that kind of pushes me away from wanting to buy it but keeps me interested enough to continue list wanting to listen and look forward to the future projects of this group and wanting to support these girls yeah, for me, it wasn't the music video was fine. Um, yeah. It was just the song itself. It was the song itself that I didn't like. Yeah. Um, like the concept, again, um, I, I, there's nothing wrong with the concept. Like I like Blackpink, right? Yeah. I like, um, I like Twenty One when they were still around. Yeah. So the concept itself is, is not. It does not push me away. No. Um, and the same with the music video. The music video I thought was was done um, fairly well. It's just the song itself. The auto tune and that thrashy beat, I just don't like it. So, yeah, um, you ready to move on to the next piece? Yeah, we can talk about the next thing. Um, so, uh, I'd say maybe three, four days um, on the 14th, uh, KST uh, Yeti released her solo debut. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the song. <laughs> uh, Dear Diary? Yeah, Dear Diary. What do you think of it, Dear Diary? I, li I liked it. I um, so everything from the music video to the song itself, the imagery portrayed, I like all of it. So I think I mentioned before that I like IU. Yeah. And for me, I felt like this would be something that you know it wouldn't be out of place for IU to do herself as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Yeti's a. Uh, her vo her her soft voice um, matches the song very well, and it's it's just so lovely. Uh, with her twentieth birthday having happened a few days prior to this music video, like almost about a week prior, it was actually a very appropriate um, song for that. Mm -hmm. In fact, if uh, I mean, it's even mentioned in the music video, you know, about her 20, turning twenty. Oh, it so. so since it's, I there wasn't any like English translation and I didn't really bother looking for like translated lyrics or whatever I don't know uh, what any of the song means I don't know what any of the lyrics are <laughs> but you should be able to tell just from, from the music video itself yeah I mean it's just her going over her her memories yeah well from, from then to now yeah I mean uh, uh any like her uh, her talking about her turning 20, I didn't know about that just because I don't know what the lyrics were saying. But, uh, 
like it was a, about her growing up and all that. Um, you could definitely tell. I just didn't know that they, it was actually part of the song. Yeah, uh, and in fact, um, I don't know if you if you noticed too, like throughout the music video when it would have scenes of her and then it would frame it like it was a photograph and it would have like a timestamp mm -hmm. or a date stamp, I should say. Yeah. So uh, some of those were from like 2015, 2016, 2017. So as to further allude to, you know, this is her talking about growing up and crossing over yeah. into adulthood. And, you know, so, I mean, I don't know anything about diaries, but uh, I've never, ri never written one, uh, never felt the need to, but uh, it, you could really feel that you know, she was telling her her story you know, throughout the years, um, just through imagery itself, and I thought that was a really, it was really well done. Not only that, but it's while it's not in line with the Red Velvet's like music style as a whole, it's very in line with, the, I'd say, the solos of all the other members as well. Yeah, I would say um, there was definitely a, an SM sound to. Uh, to it in fact I, I would say from like the very from the very beginning of the song you know had I not known um, who Yeti was I would recognize that yeah this is a SM um, production yeah because I've noticed that it's when it comes to SM and their solo uh, artists or what the solo releases it's very much softer or more I don't I wouldn't say ballad but because I feel like I always go back to a ballad, but it doesn't. It's not always like a ballad. Well, it's, it's, it's it definitely has a bit more of a of a R and B sampling to it. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a ballad that incorporates uh, some R and B elements to it, mm -hmm. and it's very well done. In fact, if I was to liken it to like an American artist, I would say Alicia Keys. I haven't heard Alicia Keys in so long, so <laughs> I I think I was. 18, 19 when I last listened to Alicia Keys. But you should still remember her. I mean, yeah. she had a very distinctive sound that wasn't very present in American in the American music scene for a while. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it, if I heard, it, heard her music, I'd re recognize it, but to actually just remember it, it's the hard part for me right now, just because it's been so long. Uh, so, let's get back to uh, Yeti's music video. Uh, <laughs> what did you think of the visuals? I mean, it's very appropriate. You know, it's everything. Everything from the imagery was alluding to her. Uh, what's the word? I guess like kind of like nostalgia, or you know, just re reflecting back on on her. You know, growing up to becoming an adult now. Yeah. And you can see that there's throughout the lyrics and throughout the imagery. It's a bit of longing for the past, right? Mm -hmm. You know, going back to a point in time where things were a bit more sim simpler and, you know, less stressful and less, you know, you know, less things to worry about, right? Yeah. But with, with it too, you know, there's still just a bit of that, that gleaming hope for, you know, and, or I should say excitement for, you know, what's coming up next. Yeah, that youthful excitement, it's not like the whole tainted excitement, like, I, I, or the jaded excitement that some of us have gone through. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I did enjoy it. Uh, I thought that the imagery was really amazing, especially uh, the use of coloring in certain scenes, like uh, how when Yeti was in front of the microphone and then Yes, uh, that scene was so well done. Yeah, and then like different images of her basically forming a band or whatever. Uh, each imagery showed the pic the image going darker and darker into like a yellowish kind of color, but it kind of gave her an older feeling. So basically, it kind of showed how she was growing through the years. Um, I. It, it, it's that coloring that you would see in older photos kind of thing. Yeah, and you know, her vocals too, I thought her vocals were well suited. Mm -hmm. So I remember in a previous episode, I kind of talked a bit of smack about uh, Hyo Min. 
with Allure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a song that, that sees uh, least of a vocals better, I, I would say, with the musical accompaniment. Yeah. Uh, if if Allure was more, or, well, if Hyoman sang a song like, that, like this, I think it would have gotten a bit more attention or a bit more interest because it would fit her vocals very much. Oh. Yeah, because the you know the, the musical accompaniment to Allure was was just a bit muted. It was less dynamic compared compared to this um, with Dear Diary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so everything just f fit very well for this music video. It complemented each other very well. I felt like in Hillman's Allure, it didn't complement it as well. So yeah, I kind I kind of felt like um, with with that. It was the the vocals and the musical accompaniment was was kind of meant to be like played as background noise rather than something to be sat down and listened to and, and focused on. Yeah. Whereas with you know Dear Diary, I was able to sit down, watch the music video and listen to the song, and stay focused on it and not feel like I just want to set it to the background and do something else while listening to it. For me, I I definitely did feel the same way. Um, but you know. I could also just put it on repeat, lay in bed, and just kind of drift to sleep to it, you know? Yes. Yeah, and I'm the same way with, like, um, a lot of I use music. So, again, like, this is, this is just a song that it's definitely more in line with with me, with with my musical taste. Yeah. Because I like IU, and this is something that I could see IU doing as well. Yeah. So, I think I think this is a a fairly decent uh, solo debut for for Yeti. I mean, it debuted to 1.2 million views at the moment. So it's been about four days. 1.2 million views. I mean, it's not too bad for a solo debut. I actually like it a lot. Yeah. So I'm actually looking. F forward to uh, more, listening to more of her solos in the future th just because of this uh, of this debut to be honest um, yeah and I think um, for some reason I, I feel like after watching this music video I want to watch her in a drama I, I feel like she has been but I could be wrong <sighs> so I'm thinking of something along the lines of like um, dream high I kind of, I could kind of see that. It kind of like a younger sister character, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, so like, IU, she was in the first uh, Dream High series. What? And I thought she did very well in that. I'm, I'm trying to remember Dream High, because I think wasn't Dream High like a. F almost, it had to be. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I know uh, that. It, I'm just trying to remember the entire story to it. Just because she she was the girl that was overweight from the beginning. Oh what? Okay, okay. And then she lost weight in the middle of it, and then gained the weight back at the end. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, I'm like Dream High. I I know it, there was, Susie was in it, but that's about all I remember from Dream High. <laughs> it's been I want to say almost a decade since Dream High did uh show, but I I, I want to say that's a lie. Yeah, I think Dream High came out like 2011 or so. So, mm. 2011. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So almost a decade. It's been eight years. Yep. <laughs> no wonder I don't remember it so well. There's been so many dramas, so many television shows, so many music videos since 2011. It kind of get gets muddled. Yeah. So like with um. With that, I think I think Yeti would, would do very well in a similar type of show. Yeah. Or even like uh, the producers. Yeah. So I think at this point, uh, I think it's a pretty good point for us to start getting to wrap this up. Yeah. Uh. So. Um. Any. Do we have anything coming up? Uh. So what's going to be announced for? What's been announced for KCON Japan? Uh. To finish off this episode is. They have announced their lineup for uh, who's going to perform on the 17th. It's 
Ha Sung Won, Kim Che Won, and the boys. For the 18th, it's going to be Itzy, Very Very, and WJSN. And then for the 19th, it's going to be Eyes One, Pentagon, and Twice. Oh, I wish it could go. I know, right? It is on May. It's in May, right? Yeah, May 17th through、uh, 19th in Maku Hari,、um, in the Maku Hari mess. I, I, I don't know where in Japan that is, but, you know, I'm gonna guess Tokyo, but. Don't quote me on that. Well, you know, most people who are familiar with Japan would automatically think Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs>、so. Which is, which is、uh, which not a bad assumption considering. Oh, no, if it's in Chiba.、Uh, for concerts. Oh, yeah. So, that, Chiba is, is right next to Tokyo. Yeah, so.、Uh, yeah. So if you're in the area for Japan, KCON Japan, if you want to <laughs> see Itzy twice. Um, WJSN, Eyes One, Pentagon, and The Boys, and Very Very. <laughs> well, we otherwise will be looking forward to seeing、uh, what the lineup's gonna be for, our, for LA and New York. Yeah. Kinda wish I could be in Japan right now. <laughs> yeah, same here. I wish I was back in Japan at the moment. Okay. So, so yeah, let's、uh, end things off、um, with what we discussed about. Everglow, Yeti, and KCON、uh, Japan. We're going to close it out.、Uh, and yeah, comment, like, subscribe, tell us what you think. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.、Uh, Bye. Ladies.